Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the New York City Council's first virtual stated meeting. At this time, please place all electronic devices to vibrate and turn on your video. Please check to see that your microphone is on, is on mute. Thank you for your cooperation. I now turn it over to Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of April 22nd, 2020. I am Lori Cumbo and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the City Council's first virtual stated meeting. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Is Adams. Oh, okay. Present. Ampri Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present and blessed. Bless. Borelli. Blessed and present. <laughs> Brannon. Present. Cabrera. Present. Chin. Present. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Blessed and present. Carnegie. Blessed, present, and highly favored. <laughs> Deutsch. Present. Diaz. Present. Drum. Here. Yeah. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Blessed and highly favored. I'm here. Jonai. Here. Yeah. Gradenchik. Also blessed and most definitely here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Present and blessings to us all. Ku. Present. Kozowitz. Here. Lanceman. Present. Lander. Grateful. Levin. Here. Levine. Very happy to be present. Lewis. Blessed and here. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Not allowed to eat in chambers. Miller. Chambers with. Present. Moya. Present. Perkins. Uh, present. Powers. Right, nice to see everybody. I am present. Reynoso. Present. Peace. Richards. Miss Oyal, present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. En nombre de todos los Latinos, Afroamericanos y Asiáticos que han muerto, presente. Rose. Blessed and present. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. I am present and on time here. Valone. Here. Van Bramer. Being very grateful to be here with all of you. I am present. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. I'm here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here and I'm happy to see all my colleagues. Very, very happy to see you all. We have a quorum. Thank you. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Rabbi Sharon Kleinbaum of Beit Sushat Torah, located at 130 West 30th Street in Manhattan. 
Thank you so much. And I'm honored to be here with all of you to offer these words as you begin your work on behalf of this great city. And we're so grateful to all of you for stepping forward and doing the work of our city. May the one who has blessed all of our ancestors in all of our lands and in all of our histories bless all of us here today. We stand on the shoulders, each one of us, of those who have come before us, who have lived through times even worse than the ones we are in right now and have blessed us with our lives to remember them, to bring their strength and to their, bring their vision to create a world for those who will come after us as we have come after them. Bless those healthcare workers in our city who every day take their lives into their hands as they save lives. Bless those essential workers and those on the streets of our city keeping it clean and safe and delivering food and essential services so that all of us may live. Bless all those who are working to bring dig dignity to the dead. Our city now counts over 10,000 dead from this virus. We pray for the immigrants, the refugees, the asylum seekers, those who are teachers and parents and grandparents those who are in our homeless shelters and those who are in our homes and on our streets. We pray for everyone today. And we pray for those of you who represent this city to continue doing the work of government to make things better for all of us, to bring to us a vision of what it could be when we gather together with intention for the good and for the health of all. Please, all of us, those of various faiths and those of no faith, we join together to bring our intentions and to bring our talents, to bring our vision and to bring our humanity, to create an, a city on which we will build into a future. We use technology to gather together today, but knowing that the one who has made all of us is present wherever each of us is right now. We pray that though we are physically distant, we are spiritually connected, and we pray we will use whatever tools necessary to build up toward the future. We say these words of the Jewish prayer, which expresses gratitude for living to this moment. We thank the one above, the one who has created our souls, the one who is in our hearts for the honor, the privilege to be alive at this moment, to use the work of our hands and our hearts for the good of all humanity. And let us say, Amen. 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 <clears throat> Thank you so much, Rabbi Kleinbaum, for that powerful and timely and important prayer that our city needs so much right now. I'd now like to ask Speaker Johnson to spread the invocation on the record. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. And I want to thank uh, my friend, who I'm so happy to see uh, on the screen, Rabbi Sharon Kleinbaum, uh, who serves as a spiritual leader of Congregation Bet Simcha Torah. She was installed as CBST's first rabbi in 1992, arriving at the height of the AIDS crisis. She guided the congregation through a period of tremendous loss and also tremendous change, while addressing social issues of the day and building a strong and deeply spiritual community. Under her leadership, the congregation has become a powerful voice in the movement for equality and justice for all people of all sexual orientations, gender identities, and expressions. I have personally worked closely with Rabbi Kleinbaum, who is a source of inspiration to so many in our community, and she is a source of inspiration to me personally. Her temple is in my council district on West 30th Street. I have been there many times for Friday night services, and I particularly have enjoyed their Pride Shabbat the last couple of years. I have fond memories of not that long ago surprising Rabbi Kleinbaum with a proclamation for her 60th birthday. Uh, Rabbi, again, I want to thank you for everything you do and for being with us today as part of this special stated meeting. I also want to thank you for your work serving New Yorkers in your community during this coronavirus crisis. Uh, we are deeply, deeply grateful for you and everything you do for our city, but especially the importance of your voice and of your spirituality and of your guidance 
during these painful weeks we have just lived through. So I want to thank you for your friendship and for being a wonderful New Yorker. And Madam Majority Leader, with that, I make a motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record. Thank you so much, Speaker Johnson. I will now recognize you again so that you can provide an overview of today's very historical meeting. Uh, thank you again, Madam Majority Leader. And uh, this is not my speaker time. This is just uh, an overview to give the council members and also the folks that are watching an understanding of what we're gonna be doing today. I wanna welcome everyone to the New York City Council stated meeting for April 22nd, 2020. This is a stated unlike anything, unlike any we've ever had before. And I think it's fair to say that this crisis is unlike anything we've faced in modern history. New York City is the epicenter of the coronavirus pandemic in the United States of America. And as of yesterday, our city has had 134,874 confirmed cases of COVID-19. We have also lost 14,000 427 New Yorkers to this terrible disease. And I don't want to get lost in numbers. Each one of those losses is a personal story, a family that has lost, uh, that has lost someone, lives that have been altered by this terrible virus. It is a death toll that defies the imagination and includes many frontline workers and public servants who have died in service to our great city. As New Yorkers, we have faced adversity many times before. Hurricane Sandy, September 11th, the Great Recession, the fiscal crisis of the 1970s. But none of those tragic experiences were quite like this. But although this crisis is unprecedented, we will get through this the same way we got through other hard times. We will look out for one another, we will fight to protect the most vulnerable, and we will work together to benefit the common good for the city that we love. We know that the days and months ahead will not be easy, but this city council is committed to doing everything we can to help New York City recover. Today, we are voting on several important and affordable housing items that are crucial to our city. And we are also introducing a COVID relief package that includes bills to extend time for tenants to repay rent and debts, as well as new protections from harassment for commercial and residential tenants. And we're introducing a plan to reopen our streets to pedestrians so they can practice safe social distancing while getting fresh air and exercise that people need to stay healthy. This relief package also includes a New York City Essential Workers Bill of Rights that requires premiums for non-salaried essential employees at large companies, prohibitions on the firing of essential workers without just cause, and paid sick leave for gig workers. I know that we are anxious to get started, but before we begin, I want to explain how we were able to meet today and to provide everyone with a roadmap on the steps we are taking in today's meetings. We are able to meet virtually today because of Governor Cuomo's emergency order 202.1, which suspended certain portions of the public officer's law. This had the effect of allowing for public bodies like the New York City Council to meet virtually. We were also able to meet pursuant to the mayor's executive order 100, which suspended section 42 of the New York City Charter to the extent it requires the city council to hold meetings as provided by its rules and requires us to have two stated meetings per month. This means that we do not need to follow our council rules regulating stated meetings, including the in-person voting requirement. Based on those executive orders, we are gonna move forward with today's meeting and we will be following all of our rules except for rule 8.40A requiring in-person voting. Here is what will happen. First, we'll vote on a motion from council member Karen Kozlowitz, the chair of our rules committee that allows for the suspension of city council rules that would otherwise prevent us from conducting our regular business virtually. After we vote on that motion, we will take a recess from this stated meeting. Then I will suspend the rule requiring in-person votes for committees. 
And we will then have a meeting of the Committee of the Whole. That is a committee made up of all of the members of the City Council. The reason why we are convening the Committee on the Whole is to enable the Council to seamlessly pass laws and resolutions out of committee and still vote on them today, the ones we'll be voting on today. After that committee meets, we will then reconvene the stated meeting and consider the items that pass the committee of the whole, along with other items that were already passed through committees prior to the coronavirus hitting New York City. For all of these steps, we will stay in the same Zoom conference. So the Zoom conference that you're in right now or that you're watching right now is the same Zoom conference where all of this will occur. With that, I turn the floor back to you, Madam Majority Leader Cumbo. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. At this time, I would now like to recognize Council Member Koslowitz, the chair of our Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections. Thank you very much. I move to suspend the rules of the council pursuant to rule 10.20 in relation to certain emergency measures to respond to the public health risk posed by the coronavirus. The suspension and this amendment to the rules of the council would only last for the duration of the declared coronavirus emergency by the governor of New York State or the mayor of New York City pursuant to New York executive law. Since I have not provided one week notice for this motion, unanimous consent is required. I move to suspend the following rules of the council. Rule 2.30, committee of the whole to the extent it requires physically posting a hard copy notice in city hall. Rule 5.10, public access to the extent it requires that a complete transcript of each committee meeting be available for in-person public inspection at the office of the city clerk. Rule 6.00, preparation and presentation of papers to the extent it can be read as requiring that all papers other than committee reports must be deposited in person with the office of the speaker before 1 p.m. at least three business days, excluding municipal holidays preceding the meeting day. Papers refer to committee, change of reference, to the extent it only allows the speaker to change the committee assignment of the local law or resolution up until the first meeting of any such committee. Rule 7.50, meetings subsection B, to the extent it prohibits a committee from meeting on the day of the stated or special meeting of the council, unless the item to be considered by such committee will, out of necessity, be proposed as a general order for that day or such committee meeting is called with the consent of two thirds of the members of such committee. Subsection C, to the extent it requires certain standing committee committees to meet once a month or once every two months. Rule 7.70, required voting subsection to the extent it requires that all committee votes must be cast in person. Rule 7. Point Council Member Koslowitz, which, which subsection of Rule 7.70? So, subsection A. Great, you can continue. Okay. Rule 7.130, discharge of committee. to the extent it would prohibit a change of reference of a committee assignment pursuant to rule 6.30. Rule 8.40 voting subsection A to the extent it requires that all votes cast at stated charter and special meetings of the council must be in person. Rule 11.60 discharge of committee subsection A 
to the extent it prohibits the council from acting on a matter referred to the land use committee or its subcommittees pursuant to section 11.20 until the committee has reported thereon or the expiration of the time limit for consideration of that matter. In addition, my motion would allow the speaker to suspend any other rule of the council that would prevent the council and its committees from conducting their regular business remotely, as long as that suspension is consistent with federal, state, and local law. To do so, the speaker would need to publish the rules being suspended on the council website. Thank you, Council Member Koslowitz, for your important work. Would any council members at this time like to debate this motion? If you would like to speak, please raise your hand using the feature in Zoom. Madam Majority Leader, Council Member Menchaca has raised his hand. Thank you, Council Member Menchaca. If you would like to speak, please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time expires. Council member, your two minutes is starting now. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the speaker, the staff, and our majority leader, Combo. Um, I just have one question. After listening to uh, Council member Kozowitz's review of the changes. Can I just get a sense of comparison to what we're voting on today to an earlier version of a systems change proposed by uh, by you, Councilmember Kozowitz, back in early March? Are there any differences with that and this one? And whoever wants to answer that question would be great. Lance Pallavi. I'd be happy to answer that question, Councilmember Menchaca. The difference between the motion that Councilmember Kozlowitz distributed to members in March and the one that she has just proposed is that the one in March did not uh, lay out each of the rules that would be suspended. The motion that she has made today that requires unanimous consent lists all of the, the uh, provisions of the council rules that would be suspended. Thanks. Lori, I'm sorry, Madam Majority Leader. Are there any other members that wish to speak at this time? Okay, as required by rule 10.20, I ask for unanimous consent to adopt Council Member Koslowitz's motion to suspend- Madam Majority Leader. Yes. Council Member Yeager has raised his hand. My apologies. Council Member Yeager, please. Council Member Yeager, your two minutes is starting now. Thank you, Madam President. Um, as I just want to uh, reflect uh, in addition to what the parliamentarian spoke uh, and uh, to Madam Chair Koslowitz's uh, remarks earlier, uh, and specifically a reference to uh, my colleague, Councilmember Chaka's question. The, uh, uh, a month ago, the, the resolution that was proposed would have uh, enabled the speaker to suspend any rule of the council. And uh, council to the council has worked very hard uh, together with the speaker to, and, the, and Chair Koslowitz to limit the suspension only to such uh, portions of our rules as would uh, inhibit our ability to conduct these meetings online and to no other matter at all. So it's, it's, a, it's a simple uh, listing of those rules that uh, would have otherwise uh, prohibited us from proceeding the way we're proceeding today and later at the Committee of the Whole. Um, and it's a, it's a statement, I think, by the speaker that he recognized uh, the, the rights and obligations and uh, authorities of members of the council and has respected us in great way to allow us to keep the rules intact, except what is absolutely necessary. And I'm grateful uh, to the speaker. I will be voting yes on this. Thank you, Councilman Yeager. I appreciate that statement. 
Thank you, Council Member Yeager. And I will begin with, as required by Rule 10.20, I ask for unanimous consent to adopt Council Member Koslowitz's motion to suspend and amend certain rules of the Council. Any member wishing to vote against Council Member Koslowitz's motion should raise their hand now in Zoom or object by saying no. Madam Majority Leader, there are no objections. Seeing none, the motion is adopted. I now recognize Speaker Corey Johnson. I would like to make a motion for a recess for about uh, one hour, it might be less, to allow the committee of the whole to meet. If the motion passes, we will stay in this Zoom conference and wait for the committee meeting to begin. We will then consider and vote on the items on the agenda for the committee of the whole. Then we will stay in the same Zoom conference and reconvene this stated meeting. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. I would ask whether there is unanimous consent for this motion for a recess. Any member wishing to vote against the recess should raise their hand now in Zoom or object by saying so. Madam Majority Leader, there are no objections. Seeing none, the motion is adopted. We will take a recess to convene a meeting of the committee on the whole. The stated meeting of April 22nd, 2020 is now in recess. <laughs> 